So in this video, we'll look at a couple of exercises on the topic of basis of a given vector space. And let's look at this given exercise. The vector space we look at is basically a two-dimensional space, right? This one is two-dimensional. And in ABC, I give you certain set of vectors. You need to determine whether it forms a basis or not. Let's look at the first one. You see, um, we have three vectors, but the dimension of the space is two. We understand that it cannot be a basis of the vector space because um, the number of given vector is uh, three, which is bigger than the dimension of the space V, right? And um, we explained in the last video that for something to be a basis of a vector space, the number of given vectors must be the same as the dimension of the vector space. And let's look at the part B. Uh, now, our, now we actually have two vectors in a two-dimensional space, but it doesn't automatically imply that it must be a basis of the vector space. And the simple thing to do in this case is just to check the determinants of the matrix, which has the columns as the given vectors. For example, for the first vector, it's going to be V1 in the first column. For the second column, it's going to be V2. And I think it's obvious that in this case, the determinant is zero. And if the determinant is zero, um, it basically means uh, something's wrong about the first condition, which means um, the two vectors are not spanning the whole space. And also the second condition about the linearly independency of the two vectors, they are not linearly independent now. So basically, we can confirm that both conditions are false for the definition of basis. So it means the given vector is not a basis for the R2. And let's look at the part C. You see, uh, same thing. Uh, let's confirm the number of vector is 2, which is the same as the dimension of the vector space. That's the first step. Then from there, we can actually carry out the computation of the determinant. The first column is the vector V1. The second column is the second vector. And in that case, you can do the computation for the determinant, and it's going to be non-zero. And non-zero is very good. Uh, this condition is good enough for us to Im imply that the two conditions for the definition of basis are satisfied. And it basically means this one is actually a basis of our current vector space. So you see, um, it's actually a relatively straightforward exercise as long as you fully understand the theoretical properties behind certain concepts like the meaning of basis, the meaning of linearly independency of given vectors, and also the meaning of spanning sets. And let's look at another example. So now let's start off with the vector space, which contains the polynomials of degree at most two. And please think about the dimension of such a vector space. For example, let's look at a typical polynomial in uh, the space here. A typical polynomial basically contains a polynomial like this. Of course, some of the coefficients can be zero. It is allowed. As long as the highest power is two, then it's fine. And basically, it means what? Um, mathematically, you can really view it as a kind of a coordinate vector like this, right? I mean, basically, it means now you have three Ds of freedom to, to change the polynomials in the sense that, conceptually speaking, um, it's really quite like the vector which has three coordinates, right? Because um, you basically have three coordinates here. And if you think about the polynomial addition you do on the polynomials, it's really the same as the vector addition you do here. So basically, conceptually, they are quite the same thing if you think about that. It gives you a sense that due to the fact that there are three degrees of freedom, it means the dimension of P2 is going to be three, right? And um, just to let you know, in general, the dimension of the space Pn, which means you look at all polynomials of degree less than or equal to n, the dimension is going to be n plus 1. If you're confused about the plus 1 term, because you have to take it into account also for the constant term, right? The constant term, the x term, etc., up to the highest degree, which is n. And that's the reason why the dimension must be n plus 1. And anyway, uh, let's do an example now based on P2. So please take a look at the two parts, part A and part B. And for the part A, uh, can you tell me whether it's a basis or not? I claim that the answer is clearly no. Can you see why? It is clearly no because you can compare the dimension with the number of vectors given. You have only two vectors. But the space actually has three dimensional, right? And um, it's clearly the case where it is not the basis. That's it. 
if the number is not the same here. And let's look at the second case. Now it's good, you actually have uh, three vectors in a three-dimensional space like this, but um, it doesn't automatically imply it must be a basis. And if you recall what we did in the last example, in this case, we need to check certain determinant, and the determinant is based on the vectors given. As I said, you have to conceptually think of these three polynomials as vectors, right? And for example, the first one, the first coordinate is the constant term, the second coordinate is the x term, which is zero, the next coordinate is x squared term, which is minus three. And similarly, the second vector is one, two, three, and the last vector is actually three, zero, and one, right? And if you think of them as vector like this, basically you have to find the determinant of the three by three matrix whose columns are exactly the same as the three vectors here. So let me put it down like this. And I trust that you still remember how to find the determinant of such a cases. You can easily see that the determinant is non-zero and this information is exactly the one we need to prove that the given set of vector uh, is actually a basis for the vector space. Let me put it down here. So basically that's the answer to this problem and that's the end of this video.